Well, hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm excited to come your way again where through the lens of scripture we are exploring um, the pathways of the Spirit in our knowledge of God, in our communion with God as we grow to know God. You know, I said in the last episode that God is Spirit and to know Him it must be within the frame of his reference. So as we are exploring the knowledge of God through the help of the Holy Spirit uh, by the lens of scripture. And I'm so excited that you are here. Um, in the last episode, we I established uh, two facts while we talked about prayer. We we're talking about praying in troubled times. First of all, I established the fact that prayer is a sacrifice to God in when you are praying in troubled times. It's a sacrifice to God because it comes out of bowels of pain and deep discomfort. But you are offering it to God anyway because you understand that prayer is um, the activity that services our communication with God. I also established the fact that prayer is hiding in God. We're talking about praying in troubled times. Number one, I said prayer is a sacrifice to God. That's when you are praying in troubled times. Number two, I established the fact that prayer is hiding in God. As Sammy says, you are my hiding place. You surround me with songs of deliverance. And the text that we read in the last um, episode in Psalm 61 it says lead me to the rock that is higher than I and you know in those days um, uh, we had what they call caves and these caves were were uh, passages or rooms that were carved out of rocks where people could go and hide in a time of war or you know uh, several things that were done uh, using the advantage of these caves that were carved out of rock. So the psalmist says, lead me to a stronghold. When he says, lead me to a rock that is higher than I, something higher than you becomes a shade, becomes a covering. And you know in Psalms 121, the Bible says that the Lord is your keeper and the Lord is the, sh the shade upon your right hand, the covering upon your right hand so we're talking about prayer which is hiding in god that's when you're praying in troubled times so when the psalmist said lead me to a rock that is higher than i he was saying bring me to your stronghold where i can hide from the trouble from the pain from the pestilence from the unfavorable circumstances that seem to surround me and tend to overwhelm me that being said, I'd like us to go deeper in this episode. Remember, we're talking about praying in troubled times. Let's begin by saying a word of prayer. Father, thank you for my viewers and listeners. Lord, open our eyes, open the eyes of our understanding. Grant us clarity. Let your word make meaning to our hearts, in our hearts and to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we're talking about praying in troubled times. I want to show you, I'm going to dwell a bit on, you know, prayer uh, is hiding in God. And then I'm going to show you from scripture, when you are surrounded with troubles or unexplainable negative situations, how do you pray? How do you pray when you don't even know what to pray about or you don't even know how to tackle the issue that seems to overwhelm you but let's let's still talk a little bit around uh, the fact that prayer is hiding in God in Psalms 32 which was the last scripture we read in the last episode in verse 7 it says you are my hiding place you shall preserve me from trouble you shall surround me with songs of deliverance so prayer makes god our refuge prayer helps us to hide in god 
in the midst of troubles, in the midst of turbulent situations. You know, in Psalms 91, the Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. I tend to look at that word shadow to mean covering, under the covering of the Almighty. So, it tells us that one of the reasons why uh, we should establish a healthy prayer life is because in the times of trouble, it becomes a shield, it becomes a, 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 a covering that hides you from the peril and the devastation that comes with those ugly situations or not so good seasons. I, I, I also think it's in Psalms 27 where the psalmist says in in verse 4 and 5, One thing have I desired, that will I seek, that I will dwell in the house of God all the days of my life, and behold His glory in, 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 in His temple. And then it says that in the time of trouble, He will hide me in His pavilion. So in troubled times, prayer becomes a hiding in God, a hiding place in God. It is in the place of prayer that God preserves us and shields us through those moments. In Psalms 31 from verse 19 to 20, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible that I want to read to you and show you, um, give you clearer understanding about this truth on prayer is hi a hiding or prayer is hiding from God, in God. It says, Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you, in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence, from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly, secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. He hides us from the plot of men and from the strife of tongues. And these are... These are the two major issues we have to deal with when we are going through troubles. Let's say you run into debt and um, it's become difficult to pay and the bank and uh, your creditors are after you, the bank is calling you, you are deeply distressed. Um, or let's say, let's use another scenario, maybe you are being threatened by a group of people, an individual. The Bible says he hides you from the plot of man and he keeps you from the strife of tongue. People begin to speak ill words about you. People begin to sow seeds of discords about you. People begin to spread false rumors about you. Uh, that your heart is not overwhelmed with all of these things. Prayer becomes the means by which you hide in God. If prayer is hiding in God, then prayerlessness is hiding from God. And I told us in the last episode that this was displayed by Adam and Eve. When they fell, they should have presented themselves before God first. Maybe God would have remedied the situation. But the Bible says they heard the voice of God and they hid the heat they were trying to hide from God so every time we entertain prayerlessness in our lives we are hiding from him and remember it's his presence that restores our joy that restores our peace it's his presence that carries therapeutic potentials to bring healing to our soul no one understands the soul and the heart of man like God but when we refuse to pray because we are overwhelmed with troubles around us, we are hiding from Him. You know, it's like when we were very tender and you sustain an injury because of the fear of uh, going through first aid and all of those things that were applied, methylated spirit, genetial violet, and uh, we're, we're so afraid of the pain, iodine and all of that, uh, that sometimes you would hide the injury from being dressed but re then we, re we later realize that you know when you hide your injury from being dressed you are actually risking a part of your body you are going to have more pains it's going to be contaminated with bacteria 
and it's going to develop into something worse than that but we didn't know that we felt that escaping the temporal pain that came with dressing the wound was enough for us how how sad to have thought that way and that's the reason why regardless of what you go through prayer must be your first point of call god doesn't call us to the place of prayer when we have a right state of mind no no because of what jesus christ has done for us we now have access to god ephesians 2 18 says by him we have access to the father through one spirit there's no protocol in our communicating with god yes prayer has different it has structures that should be understood but we're simply talking about communicating with god when you seem to be overwhelmed with crisis situations there's no formula to that all you need to do is cry out to him instead of holding back and sulking in the pain that is what prayer does it brings us to hide in the secret place of his presence now how do i pray when i'm going through troubled times when i'm experiencing difficulties when i'm experiencing pain trauma anxiety when there is imminent danger ahead how do i how do i pray you understand at this point that it's even difficult to bring my mind into a state of coordination my heart is overwhelmed i'm you know the pace of my heart my heart has picked up its pace there's trouble on every side it looks like my life is under threat it looks like the situation is going to swallow me up how in the midst of this how do i pray i want to show you one of the ways by which you can pray when you go through troubling situations and be able to walk yourself into answers to those prayers and divine intervention psalms 55 psalms 55 now this is something i've experienced practically in my life that i want you to learn from psalms 55 now if you read uh, in context from the very beginning of this chapter psalms 55 it's talking about um, the terrors and the betrayals that comes from supposed friends, people who are supposedly close to the psalmist. It means his greatest nightmare was coming from those who were closest to him. And so this is a very troubling situation. Verse 16, it says, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Then he mentions how many times? He says, evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. First of all, he says, I will call upon God. It's an act of your will. You decided that rather than running from God, I'm going to run into God in my time of trouble. I'm going to stay with God until he delivers me until he brings a solution to me until he floods my heart with his peace and his joy he says as for me i will call upon god beyond your emotions beyond how you feel you exercise your will to strengthen you to pray in the time of trouble and then he tells us how many times he says in a day he says evening and morning and at noon this speaks of keeping what I call keeping the prayer watch. Now, I had led this at a period of my life when I was going through a lot of spiritual warfare, battles with the enemy. And uh, God taught me from this scripture how to pray. And many of you must have heard of uh, this before. But observing what is called the prayer watches. Now, you know, in the Bible, God revealed himself to the Hebrew people. And the Hebrew people had different timings in the day. 
when they prayed and offered sacrifice to God. In fact, when you read the Bible, you hear sometimes of what the Bible calls the morning sacrifice or the evening sacrifice. Like in Psalms 141 verse 2, it says, Let my prayer be said before you as incense and lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice. So these were timings that God had apportioned to the children of Israel to lift up the incense of prayer and sacrifice to God. In fact, in Luke chapter 1, the congregation of the children of Israel were engaging in such prayer at um, one of such moments. And Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, was offering incense in the temple and an angel appeared to Zechariah and that brought about the birth of John. So it's not just calling upon God, but understanding the timings of the Spirit, windows in time that are opened into eternity for God to arise in that situation where you find yourself. He says, I will call upon God evening and morning and noon. Noon is 12. Just like we have 12 noon, we have 12 midnight. We have 6 a.m. morning, we have 6 p.m. evening. We have 3 p.m. afternoon, we have 3 a.m. morning. So you see, inversely each of these moments will either be in the morning at noon or at evening he says i will call upon god evening and morning and noon and god began to teach me about the eight watches of the day just like we have 24 hours from 12 midnight which begins a new day to another 12 midnight and then you have um, 12 midnight, you have 3 a.m., you have 6 a.m., you have 9 a.m., you have 12 noon, you have 3 p.m., you have 6 p.m., you have 9 p.m., and you have 12 midnight again. I guarantee you to try this. Every time you are going through troubles, probably spiritual warfare, battles against you, plots against you, situations that are trying to swallow you up, I want you to try keep these watches in prayer. Call upon God. Even if it's 10, 15 minutes in each of these hours, call upon Him again and again and again and again. Do that until you get a response from God. One thing you must know about the God we serve is He's not just a prayer hearing God. He's a prayer answering God. And one of the virtues that God loves in His children in the place of prayer is perseverance. Remember the story of the widow in Luke chapter 18? She persevered. Just doing it one day and not seeing result is not enough. You stay on it. Remember, it's an act of your will. You didn't do it because you were emotionally or mentally sound. You had to force by an act of your will to stay on God until He moves in your situation. And like he did for the psalmist, I know he will move on your behalf. At the end of the day, David arrived at a point in his life where God had totally defeated all his enemies. And God established him. He established his throne and made him one of the greatest kings that ever lived. Let me end by reading uh, verse 18 of Psalms 55. It says, He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. This is as a result of praying and crying aloud to God evening and morning and noon. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from of old. Verse 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. How do you cast your burden? By praying call upon him right now whatever the situation that you may be going through the first thing to be done is to get in the place of prayer give thanks to him because you know he's going to arise on your behalf you know he's not unaware of the situation and you stay in the place of prayer until you get a response from heaven your life is depending on it your family depends on it your territory depends on it and someday your nation will depend on it hallelujah i want to pray for you right now that in the name of jesus christ whatever you are going through whatever battle is against you 
that may God arise on your behalf and may God's rising on your behalf bring into pieces, shatter in pieces the enemy in the name of Jesus. May God stay every adversity that has risen against you in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you see the finger of God in this season. May the peace of God that passes on understanding rest and guard your heart in Jesus' mighty name. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. Get into the place of prayer and realize that the God that you serve is the God that answers prayer. God bless you. Till I come your way again.